The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I know what that's saying, but he's he started something this morning, I believe. And he wants to keep on doing it. He wants to keep on blessing us. He wants to keep on blessing you. You like that little song said, if he keeps on blessing and blessing, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I know what I'm going to do. If he keeps on blessing and blessing, I'm just going to keep on praising and praising. He keeps on pouring it on. Glory. Just keep on pouring it on. Better than Holy Ghost chocolate syrup. Hershey's. Got to pour it on. Just keep on pouring it on. We can be confident in the fact that God will do something. You see, the enemy wants us to believe God is that he got tired. I mean, he's got a lot of reason to get tired. He doesn't get tired, we know. But the enemy wants us to think he's just gotten weary. So much sin in the world, so much sin in the church world that he's just gotten tired, that he's not going to do anything else. And the Lord has, even the Old Testament said, the Lord has forsaken the earth. That's what they thought. He just got too busy with something else. Maybe he's worried about China and he don't have time for America anymore. Well, the Bible doesn't tell us that. God is still at work. God is still up to something. Sometimes when you when you don't see things happening, sometimes when your symptoms are the same, when every day seems the same, when your financial situation seems the same, it seems like nothing is happening. But we've got to go beyond the natural. Because God's Word tells us that He who has begun that good work in us will keep on doing it. Keep on performing it until the day of Jesus Christ. The scope of the work, it begins at conversion and it ends in glorification. God has a purpose for us throughout our life and especially our Christian life. When you become converted, when you become born again, saved, or whatever adjective you want to use there, but when you become a Christian, it the work just starts. You know, some people stop there. They say, well, I'm saved, satisfied, and, you know, rustified, I reckon. I don't know. (laughs) Trying to justify, they get rustified. But God has just started. He has just begun what He wants to do in your life. And what He's doing in this church house this morning, that's just a little bit of honey along the way. There's honey in the rock, my brother, honey in the rock for you. Leave your sins for the blood to cover. There's honey in the rock for you. God just wants to work you over this morning. He wants to bless you. And it just keeps good and getting gooder and gooder. I mean, you know, it starts at, at conversion. And it's going. He, he will keep on working on you. The time that God stops working on us is when we say, uh-uh, I don't want no more of that. See, we cut God off. And some people do that. Some Pentecostals do that. I don't want any more of that. Wait a minute, I thought you were, were in the boat. I thought you were in the full full gospel ship. Yes. You know, we talk, people don't even understand our language. I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Yes. Well, when does a ship sail into the sky? You've got to have the Holy Ghost to know what we're talking about. I mean, you know, we're talking about taking a trip that you ain't never seen before. I mean, no ship has ever done it. No rocket, no blast off, no anything has ever done what we're going to do one of these days. We're going to blast off from this earth, glory to God, like nothing you've ever seen before in your life. And don't get discouraged because things down here, things down here, the things that we suffer, the Scripture says this momentary trial is nothing to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. God has been working on you and He'll keep on working on you until the day that you're glorified. The segment of the work. It actually, it involves three works of grace. Salvation, sanctification, spirit, baptism, and fullness. And we talk about that in Pentecostal circles. But actually, it's just part of the work that God wants to do in our life. When He saves us, He begins this work in us. And of course, 
He begins working on us before that, but just so we can understand it, when He saves us as far as we can understand, He begins that Christian, that work in us as a believer. You know, He deals with you before you become a believer. He loves you before you become a believer. And people get that mixed up. They say, Jesus loves me just like I am. He does, but He don't want, us, he don't want you to stay like you am. He loves you in spite of who you are and what you are, but He don't want you to stay what you are. He wants you to stay who you are, but He don't want you to stay what you are. He wants to make you into a better what you are and thereby making you into a better who you are. He wants to keep on working on you. And He saves you. And He will sanctify you. You tell me, brothers and sisters, you can't feel that sanctifying power this morning. He will sanctify you initially and He'll keep on sanctifying you until you get together with Him in heaven one day because He's still working on us. Believe it or not, we still got some rough edges. Believe it or not, we still got some wrinkles. And some of you can really see a lot of them when you look in the mirror. But you know what? Those are just earthly wrinkles. Those wrinkles, the wrinkles that he's working on are a whole lot deeper. You know, they told one girl, beauty skin deep, but ugly goes all the way to the bone. When he works on you, though, he's working on something more, a whole lot more inside than that. We work on the outside and try to get to the end. He works on the inside and works his way on out. The old song like to sanctify that song in the 60s. Twist and shout, work it on out. And that's what he's doing, brother. He's working it on out. We've got things in us that people think when you get saved, you just get rid of all of it. Well, I wish that was true. And it does start there, but it doesn't. You've got to let God work you over. You've got to let Him sanctify you and break the power of sin over your life. Cast the old man out of the house. Put the old man in the grave dead where he belongs. Because see, the old man, he don't like to serve God. The old man likes to rake around. The old man likes to to rape and rob and steal. And he likes to take drugs and shoot up. And he likes to drink things that he's not supposed to drink. And he likes to do things he's not supposed to do. And he likes to take things that don't belong to him. That's what the old person likes to do. And that's the person that we have to crucify and let God break the power of sin, sanctify us, where we can live a victorious life. And God will fill us with the Spirit of God. He will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Maybe you're here today and you don't really understand when God moves on someone in our services and they may speak in a language. Of course, they didn't learn the language themselves. And it's not them talking. It's their human vocal cords, but it's the Spirit of God speaking through them. That's what happens when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. The initial evidence, speaking in tongues. And go. there's many other evidences too. And throughout your Christian life, God wants you to live victorious. The service of the work. We must do our part in allowing God through His Spirit to work in and through us. We want God to do all the work. And God will do the work if we let Him. We've got to let God work. As I said, we can't say, ho, and no more. We stop the Lord. God is a gentleman. He's not going to prize against your will. Now, He'll do things to get you to to yield your will to Him. He'll make you listen. There's a song written about that. He'll make you listen, but He won't make you bow. Now, one day He'll make you bow. You know, everybody will bow one day. But what it's saying is that He is not going to force you to serve Him. He He gives you a choice. We have to do our part. And even as Christians, we have a choice. Nobody makes you come to church. Your parent may make you when you are a certain age, and they ought to encourage you and make you go to church. Somebody say, my parents made me go to church, and that's why I'm a devil. No, that's not why you're a devil. You're a devil because there's sin in your heart. That's why you're a devil. And you get a certain age, you think you're big enough to do what you want to, and it just comes out. What's in there just comes out. That's what God wants to do. He wants to work you over and break that in your life. We have to allow Him through His Spirit. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. You know, He's not going to manifest Himself in a church that don't want Him. Tear things up and cause confusion. That's not God. 
God's not the altar of confusion. There's plenty of churches that's dying for the presence of God. They want God. That's where He wants to show up at. He's not going to show up in a place. You know, a black man tried to join join this church one time. They're not used to having black folks there. And he tried to get in. And the preacher said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. So we'll wait till next week and we'll pray about it. He came back next week, and, you know, and he said, well, did uh, did you pray about joining the church? And he said, yeah, I did. And he said, well, did you, what, what did God tell you? He said, well, he didn't really tell me much of anything. He said, right, let's, let's pray about it another week and we'll see what God does. He came back next week and the preacher said, did you pray about joining the church? He said, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. And he said, well, what did God say? He said, I, don't worry about it, son. He said, I've been trying to get in there 25 years myself. <laughs> well, the Spirit works with us. He deals with us. He tries to help us. And we got to uh, cooperate with Him. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, Philippians 2, 12 and 13, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. You know, when the preacher's away, the cat's away, the mouse will play, and we've heard all that. You know what? If you live for Jesus, it shouldn't matter whether the Pope was here or not. It shouldn't matter whether the president was here. It shouldn't matter who was here. You shouldn't change your life or your style because the preacher's around because he's not. If you live for God, you're not living for the preacher. You're living for God. That doesn't even cost you anything. This preacher said, you have not obeyed just in my presence only, but now even much more in my absence. Somebody was right with God. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, I, this verse has been totally misquoted, misused, and everything else. Where he said, work out your own salvation. Here's what people say. Well, I got my salvation. You got your salvation. You work things out the way you think God wants you to. I work things out the way that God wants me to. God might want you to do something. He might want me to do something. Well, we know that's true in Christian service, but I'm talking about it might be wrong for you to drink, but it's all right for me to drink. It might be wrong for you to smoke a little J, but it's all right for me to do that. You know, it might be wrong for you to do this. You know, God is one God. Yeah. And when He says, work out your own salvation, it's talking about all of us being occupied in our salvation. That's what some of the newer versions say. Occupy yourself in your salvation. It's not talking about you work out your salvation the way you see fit. I work out my salvation the way I see fit. I scratch my back, you scratch your back like two peas in a pack. It's not, that's not the way it is. God is not telling me to work my salvation out the way I think is best. And you just work yours out. I mean, if we could work our own salvation out, we could just save ourselves. Make our own laws. That's what the lawless are doing now. They just make their own laws. They break the laws that are made. That's all right. They just make loopholes and cover them up and make more. God is saying, work. Be occupied in your salvation. Do it with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. That verse means that He helps you want to do it and He helps you to do what you want to do. It is God who works in you both to will, He helps you to want to, and to do, to do what He wants you to do of His good pleasure. Because you're not serving yourself anymore. You're not serving the church. You're not serving the preacher. You're serving God. Till we all come, Ephesians 4.13, in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what God is working towards in our life. He wants us to become mature adults. He doesn't want us to, as it were, go into our second childhood. Some of us haven't gotten out of our first childhood yet spiritually. And God doesn't want us to be that way. He wants us to grow up as men and women. He wants us to be mature Christians. Not to be sitting around pouting and snouting all the time. He'd rather for you to be shouting than pouting. Don't. Be like that. He wants us to grow into a perfect man, a perfect person, a perfect, complete, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He wants us to be like Him. In fact, He says in Romans 8.29, For whom He did foreknow, 
Them He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. God is working on us. It took Him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient He must be, He's still working on me. And He's still working on us. What is He trying to get us to be, to get us to do? He's trying to form us into the image of His Son. Those whom He foreknew. God knew you always, and He knew that you would come to Him and be saved. You had a choice to do it, but God knew that you were going to do it. He also did predestinate. Now, no one is predestinated to be saved or lost. That's your choice. The predestination is only for believers. You as a believer are predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. And it's up to you to allow God to work that out in your life. I've been in the way for 40 years. Well, you need to get out of the way and let God work in your life. Let God form you into the image of His Son. Stop trying to form yourself into the image of a pastor, into the image of some church, into the image of a group. Let God form you into the image of His Son. Because that's the only one who saves you. That's the only one you'll answer to one day. You're not going to answer to the church. You're not going to answer to the preacher. You're not going to answer to the conference. And we all have accountability. And I'm not saying we should be radicals, but I'm just saying we answer to God. And if we answer truly to God the way that we should... What we, our service to the church, our service to the preacher, our service, all that will be taken care of. A man who is right with God will be right with his wife. A woman who's right with God will be right with her husband, right with her children. We'll treat our neighbor right when we're right with God. God is working on us, being confident of this very thing that He who has begun that good work in us will keep on performing it until the day of Jesus Christ. Looks like God's got a big assignment for some of us, but He's doing a pretty good job. He's working us over. He's worked me over this morning. And I know He's worked you over too. And may God continue to work us over until He calls us home, until Jesus comes to get the church. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 